Green light. Hello, Sam, are you back? Yes, you are. Well, good morning. Good to see everybody. I hope and pray that you have had a dose of the power in the blood today. Give you a few quick announcements. Uh, prayer meeting night at 6 o'clock. Tuesday evening at 6 o'clock is Rest Home Ministry at Yancey House. Wednesday evening, 7 o'clock, is our midweek Bible study. Next week, I believe, is homecoming. And Lord willing, we'll be having a meal after church. So bring something for me to eat. <laughs> and you can help me. All right, those are the announcements that I have. Jamie has an announcement. Anymore. Okay. If that's it, then that's it. Well, how about if we just worship a little while? Would that be good? Yeah. Okay. You guys, I, I'm just going to let you sit this morning unless you just bound and determined to jump up. So we're going we're gonna to worship the Lord for a few minutes. There's a song that uh, Bill Gaither wrote some years ago. It's called, I Will Serve Thee Because I Love Thee. And you know, that's the reason that we serve God. And the reason we love Him is because He first loved us. So, you know, sometimes we, we kind of lose track of things. And we get busy and we, we, we do things out of a sense of duty or obligation. But as the Lord told that church at Ephesus when he wrote the letter, he said, listen, I know you've been working, but I got a little bit against you because you've left your first love. And you need to remember from where you're fallen and repent and do those first works again. So let's think about how much God loves us today. And let's think about the fact that, yes, we, we serve him because we love him. And if you don't know the words, it's in your blue hymnal on page 397. Oh, it's on the phone. Or never mind, it's on the screen. I apologize. Thank you, Teresa. <laughs> See, my hindsight's not real good this morning. I will serve thee because I love thee. You have given life to me. And I was nothing before you found me. You have given life to me. Heartaches, broken pieces, ruined lives are why you died on Calvary. Your touch is what I long for. You have given life to me. Let's sing it again. And I will serve thee because I love thee. You have given life to me. And I was nothing before you found me. You have given life to me. Heartaches, broken pieces, ruined lives or why you died on Calvary. Your touch is what I long for. You have given life to me. 
sing it one more time. I will serve thee because I love thee. You have given life to me. And I was nothing before you found me. You have given life to me. Ruined lives on why you died on Calvary. Your touch is what I long for. You have given life to me. Jesus saves, oh rejoice, let the nations hear your voice, he stills the storm, calms the waves, tell the world, Jesus saves, in these days doubt and fear troubled souls need to hear bring them hope darkest night through the shadows shine his light and tell of how his love was shown Jesus came to make it known a cattle stall in Bethlehem down to earth the great I am from the stable to the cross the sinners gain heaven's loss from the grave to heaven again he broke the power of death and sin yes Jesus say oh rejoice and let the nations hear your voice he stills the storm, and calms the waves, tell the world, Jesus saves. Amazing grace, a sound so sweet, come and worship at his feet, take the grace. He's given you Go and see What God can do Yes, Jesus say Oh, rejoice And let the nations Hear your voice He stills the storm Calms the waves, tell the world, Jesus saves, and I will serve thee, because I love thee, you have given life to me, and I was nothing. Before you found me, you have given life to me. Heartaches, broken pieces, 
ruined lives are why you, you died on Calvary. Your touch was what I long for. You have given life to me. Heartaches, broken pieces, ruined lives are why you died on Calvary. Your touch was what I long for. You have given life to me. Aren't you glad that he came to give us life and that more abundantly? Man, I tell you, I'm so thankful for that this morning. I'm thankful that he, he could take a wreck and make it into something. It's amazing. God's grace is absolutely amazing. And I'm so thankful for it this morning. You know, this song is has become one of my absolute favorites. And I just can't get away from it. Every time I hear it, it just, it just changes my life. There is a king seated among us let every heart receive him now where there is praise he will inhabit there will be grace and mercy all around and every burden will be in his presence and every trophy will be laid down at his feet there is a name that reigns above all others jesus christ the king above all kings And unto the Lamb, honor and glory, worthy is He who overcame, buried in shame, but risen in power, He is alive, the stone is rolled away. And all our worship will belong to Him forever. Death is conquered and our Savior holds the keys. There is a name that reigns above all others. Jesus Christ, the King above all kings. Yes, Lord. It won't be long and we will behold Him and every tear He'll wipe away. We'll be at home. The war will be over. Soon we will meet our Savior face to face. And every burden will be lifted in His presence. And every trophy will be laid down at His feet. There is a name that reigns above all others. Jesus Christ, the King above all kings. And all our worship will belong to you forever. 
holy, holy, for all eternity. Yours is the name that reigns above all others. Jesus Christ, the King above all kings. Jesus Christ, the King above all kings. Man, I love that last verse. It won't be long. Let's sing it one more time. It won't be long. We will behold Him. And every tear He'll wipe away. We'll be at home. The war will be over. And soon we will meet our Savior face to face. And every burden will be lifted in His presence. And every trophy will be laid down at His feet. There is a name that reigns above all others. Jesus Christ, the King above all kings. And all our worship will belong to you forever. Holy, holy, for all eternity. Yours is the name that reigns above all others. Jesus Christ, the King above all kings. Jesus Christ, the King above all kings. Mm -hmm. Above all kings. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Lord, we love you this morning. Lord, we thank you that you're the King of all kings, the Lord of all lords the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the one who's coming to rule and to reign. Lord, we thank you that soon and very soon the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our Lord and His Christ. And every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that He is Lord. Lord, we're so thankful that we can do that today. We can bow in Your presence and we can acknowledge the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And Lord, I thank you that grace is amazing. I thank you that the blood of Jesus still cleanses from all unrighteousness. And still, whosoever will can come and drink of the water of life freely. It's a free gift available to all because of Calvary. Lord, we love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we worship you today. We thank you and praise you for the goodness of God. We thank you, Lord, for love that reaches to all generations. We thank you for grace that continues to be available. And Lord, the word says you give more grace. And Lord, we thank you that the mercies of God are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. So, Lord, we give you praise and honor and glory in your house today. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Well, this is a special time because we've got some folks that want to uh, officially become part of this fellowship. So, uh, Diane and Alan, if you'd like to come up here so we can thoroughly embarrass you. <laughs> we promise not to do that. Oh, good, Joy's going to join again. She's my security blanket. She's your security blanket? <laughs> 
honey, turn around here and let them see how pretty you are. <laughs> well, now they are a scary bunch. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. Alan, come over here. I hate to be the only man standing by myself. All right. I just got a couple of questions I need to ask you, okay? Have you accepted Jesus as your Savior? And you too, okay. And you feel this is where the Lord's leading you to be a part? Oh, yes, okay. Well, all right. I guess we'll put up with you then. <laughs> Hold on. Let me pray for you. Lord, I bless Diane and I bless Alan this morning. I'm so thankful for both of them. And I'm so thankful, Lord, that you have chosen to bring them to be a part of this body. And, Lord, we ask your blessing on them. And as they commit to this body, Lord, we commit to them to pray for them, to support them, to help them in every way we can. And, Lord, we love you and thank you for this gift in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, the only thing you have to put up now with is people coming up and loving on you. <laughs> See, you have to look at them.
wasn't too bad, was it? <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Amen. I did, didn't I? I asked Diane, I said, that wasn't that, that, wasn't that bad, was it? She said, yeah, it was. <laughs> oh, me. Well, we're glad to have you. It's good, good, good to see everybody. Hey, Richard and company. <laughs> Bill, good to see you this morning, brother. A couple of things, and then we'll get started here. Um. Uh, we need to be praying for Bruce and Shirley. They're friends of uh, Eddie and Sheila. And Bruce is in the last stages of Parkinson, and he's pretty rough. So be praying for both of them. And Shirley has back problems. So lift them up when you will. And I've been asked to read this thank you card real quickly. Uh, it says, thank you so very much for the most gracious donation, local outreach to Hawken Brothers involving funeral expenses for our uh, dear cousins. Your sweet expression of love and concern have ministered great comfort and encouragement to each of us as our hearts, uh, to our hearts as the Lord continues to remind us of his steadfast love and faithfulness and imparts daily grace and hope of eternity and uh, with him. We love and appreciate you so much. That's from Jeff and Kathy, Laura and Daryl and the Woody family. All right. We got a, we got a special time this morning. I told you, I guess it was last Sunday, about... Uh, our, our need for more outreach evangelism, that sort of thing. And uh, I also mentioned that Bruce and Jane Espy were wanting to come up and do a, like, like a seminar uh, for like half a day on Saturday, September the 10th, I believe it is, about evangelism. And Bruce said, uh, I've been, you, know, you know how Bruce is. He's a little bit scatterbrained like some of us. And he kept trying to explain to me what he was talking about and... Uh, I never did get it fully. And he said, well, there's a fellow up there that's, that's really been into this, and it's been so tremendously successful. He goes to a big church out in Weaverville. And I said, okay. And he said, would it be all right if he called you? He can probably explain this better than I can. And I said, okay, Bruce, that'll be fine. So I get a call, and uh, he said, this is Charles, and one of your church members asked me to call you. I said, that wouldn't be Bruce Espy, would it? And he said, yeah. So uh, I said, he's been talking to me about this, this evangelistic outreach called Evangelism Explosion. And I'm not familiar with it. And I said, uh, Bruce is having a little bit of a difficulty trying to get through my thick head exactly what he's talking about. He said, well, uh, Charles said, well, let me, uh, let me talk to you a few minutes. And about half an hour later, uh, <clears throat> after he'd told me how many people he'd led to Jesus and so on and so forth, I said, uh, you know, this makes more sense than, than Bruce was conveying to me over the phone. So could you come and share with us a little bit? And he said, sure. And I said, when could you? He said, well, pretty much any time. I said, how about Sunday? He said, okay. And uh, I said, well, let me tell you where the church is. He said, I know where it is. I said, hmm, okay. Uh, he said, you know me. I said, hmm, okay. He said, you knew my brother. And he told me who his brother was. And I said, You're, you ain't. And he said, I am. And I, hadn't, I don't believe I'd seen Charles, and I'd swear I believe it's been 40 years. It has been. I think the last time I saw him, we was both just as heathen as we could be. You know, you, you hate to dredge up the past. <laughs> but after he got done talking to me on the phone, I said, holy mackerel, it is the end times. Jesus is coming. I mean, if I got saved and he got saved, son, you better be looking up. It's my near time. So... My old buddy, Charles McCurry, is going to come and share with you this morning. And, man, it's good to see you. God bless you, brother. Yes, sir. Good morning. So, I always, when I get up for a crowd, I say something and I, I like a little response from the crowd. So, 
I'm going to tell you something, and you're going to say back to me what you know to say back. God is good. And all the time, amen. So we're all the same sheet of music. We know what we're doing. That's it. Now all you have to do is talk a little closer. Okay. How's that? All right. So I have been doing evangelism explosion for about 11 years. I was trained at Brookstone. Uh, we had taken every class that Brookstone offered, every lift class that you can imagine. And we had learned stuff that I knew my whole life, but it had been explained to me in a way that I understood it more because I was living for my Savior. It wasn't just words going in one ear and out the other and retaining some of it in my brain. I was, it was like God put that in my heart. And every time a word went in here, it went here and it stayed. So when this evangelism explosion training came up, I told my wife, I said, uh, we're going to have to, uh, we're going to have to take that. And she said, oh, she said, I, I can't do that. I said, sure you can. And when I heard about this, <clears throat> I've been in church my whole life. I've been saved a while. And I always wanted to share the gospel. And I could tell somebody what God did for me. But you know what I couldn't do? I couldn't explain it in a way that anybody could understand. And I'm thinking, I got excited. I said, so they're going to teach me how to go out and share the gospel with every man, woman, and child that I come in contact with. That was exciting to me because I know, as you know, that we live in a very sinful world. And we run across people every day that are lost and going to hell. I wouldn't be doing this if I hadn't been to at least 10 different states and led people to Christ using this method in every one of those states. At least one person, in most cases, multiple people. Now, a friend of mine, I don't know how many of you guys know Jeff Reeser. Anybody know Jeff Reeser? I'm sorry. I know Jeff Reeser, too, and I love that guy and Susan. So when Jeff decided to go out on Equip America, Jeff was awakened in the middle of the night by the sound of a trumpet. I don't know if anybody's ever heard the story or not, but I'm going to share it with you. He called me, and he said, I'm going out on an endeavor. And he said, I'm going across the United States and teach people how to share the gospel using EE. I said, well, that's good. How do you plan on doing that? He told me the story. He said, I was awakened in the middle of the night, and he said, I got up and I went downstairs, and he said, I was taken directly to Ezekiel chapter 33. And he said one verse jumped out at me. And I'm going to read that verse to you right now. Verse 6. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hands. Now, you're sitting there at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, pitch black outside, and God tells you that. They sold everything they had. They bought a motor coach and a trailer and went to work for Evangelism Explosion and went all over the United States teaching people how to share the gospel. That is the 
most obedient thing that I guess I've ever heard. And it has had an impact on me. So, with that said, there's a couple of verses of Scripture that I want to share. That's the main one. Then, I want to go over to Isaiah 62.6. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day or night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, of the Lord keep not silence. That means everywhere you go, make mention of the Lord. It's the easiest thing in the world you've ever done. Let me ask you this. How many of you guys would love to see every pew from here to here and all the way across filled every time the doors are open? How many people do you know in your community, just in your community, that don't know Jesus Christ? I have done this in many churches. I would be up speaking about something like this, and I would say, what is it I hear? It's Sunday morning. I hear a lawnmower, or I hear a chainsaw. Why ain't that person in church? It's because, and I'm going to be brutally honest, me, you guys, have failed. Who have we failed? We've not failed ourselves. We failed the one that died on Calvary for us. The Bible says that follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Is that not what we want to be? Absolutely. We know what the Great Commission says. The Great Commission says to go into all the land, go everywhere. And make disciples. What is a disciple? A follower of Christ. A disciple, the twelve were not anything special. They were like me and me and me and Pastor were years ago. We were vile. We were ungodly. They were the same way. But when they started following the Master, just like we did, things changed. Our lives changed. So, in order to share the gospel using the evangelism explosion method, it's a very simple thing. And what you guys will learn in a Saturday workshop, a Share Your Faith workshop, is a simple, something you carry with you everywhere you go, your hand. you got five fingers. So I'm going to go over what you're going to learn in a Share Your Faith workshop. Now, with every one of these points, there are two verses of Scripture that go along with it. There is also a story that goes along with it that ties it all together. Heaven is a free gift. Does everybody agree with that? We know that heaven is a free gift because of what the Bible tells us about man. Man is a sinner and cannot save himself. Not a one of us can save ourselves. We know about man because of what the Bible teaches us about God. God loves us and does not want to punish us, but God is also just, and He has to punish our sin. So, that leaves man with a problem. He can't save himself. Man is a sinner. God loves us and does not want to punish us, but God is also just, and He has to punish that sin. So God solved that problem in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is both God and man. He died on a cross, and He rose from the dead to pay the penalty for our sin debt and purchase a place in heaven for us. Now, when I get to that point, one of the stories that I like to tell, and I've always, I've always done this, and it's always worked out, and I'm going to show you what it's all about. I'm going to speak a little louder. I'm going to lay this down. I'm going to speak a little louder. So this is my sin. This is me. 
And God wants to have a relationship with me. But because of my sin, this contains everything that I've ever done. Good, bad, indifferent, whatever. It contains a lot of information. But this is me, and this is my sin. And there it is. And God wants to have a relationship with me, but he's unable to do so because he can't look upon sin. But when God saw that this, this was the problem, he knew what the problem was, and he sent Jesus to die on the cross, and he came and he took that sin, and he took it and buried it forevermore. When he died on the cross, that was the day. So he's God, and then has a relationship with me. And you look at people when you tell them that story, and the tears. Will come. And then you say, and the way you receive this free gift of eternal life is through faith. Not just temporary faith of, a, you know, praying for God to take care of you through a, a, a trip or through an illness or anything like that. That's temporary faith. Or not just head knowledge of who God is. The Bible says that even the demons know who God is and tremble. But True saving faith is trusting in Jesus Christ alone for your eternal life. And then when you get through there, if you get right there with that person, you say, does this make sense to you? And more times than not, they're going to say, it absolutely does. Would you like to pray right now to receive the free gift of eternal life? I've had them hit their knees right there. I prayed with a boy over at Lake Louise in the middle of the road on my knees. And he, he accepted Christ right there. And his wife standing back over here crying. It is so fulfilling to be able to do this. And it's so easy to be able to do this. Now, that's the presentation. How do you find out somebody's condition? You may know what they are. You may know what they do. You, it may be somebody you've never met before. But when you meet that person and you start a conversation, hey, Pastor, how you doing? David. I'm going to call you David. I'm going to call you Pastor. So do you, do you watch any baseball? No. What, what, do you, what do you do for fun? What do you do? You pitch. You pick a guitar. You're a ham radio operator. See, I know a few things about this guy. So, I know a little bit about David. I, I'm going to start a conversation with him. And after we talk for maybe, I don't know, 30, 45 seconds, I'm going to say, so let me ask you something. If you rated your life on a scale of 1 to 10, what would it be? Okay. So let me ask you this, if I might. And that's, that's the thing about evangelism explosion. You never force yourself on anybody. You always ask them, can I ask you a question? And if they say no, then no means no. So if God were more a part of your life, do you think it would move closer to a 10 or further away from a 10? Okay. So let me ask you this. If you, if, say for instance, God forbid you died today. Do you think you'd go to heaven, or would you say that's something you're still working on? That's a good question. Okay. All right, let me ask you another question, if I might. If you died today, and you stood before God, and God looked at you and said, David, why should I let you stay in my heaven? What would your answer be? Well, my answer would be because of the blood of Jesus, but the one you're looking for is just because I've been a fairly good guy. <laughs> that's exactly what you're going to hear most of the time, because I've been a fairly good guy. I've fed the homeless, I've done this, I've done that, I give money to the church. And that's like, you, you heard about, a, has anybody here heard about a do religion? There's all kinds of them out there where you do, 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 and you still are not good enough. You know, we're the only people in the world, we ought to praise God for that, we're the only people in the world that have a done religion. Our religion was done on Calvary. And when Jesus rose from the dead, it was done. So, 
Does that sound like something you guys would like to learn how to do? I mean, it, it, it is so fulfilling. <clears throat> it's, you're going to get a big return from it. But you know who's going to get the biggest return? Those sinners that you brought lead to Christ. All the people in this community. You'll see this community turn around. I guarantee you, if you've got to thinking right now, within two miles, there's enough people that are not in church today to fill every pew in here. And you guys can do it. And I'm going to come and I'm going to help Bruce teach this. And I'd love to see every one of you here. And it's not, hey, you know why people don't share their faith? I would love to hear at least one answer. I heard two, two answers. But both of them said the same thing. Fear. Do you know, and I, t I, t I, was, I was doing a Sherry Faith workshop over in uh, Taylorsville. And do you know, I, I had heard this the week before, and I got to looking into it, and I don't like to give bad information. <clears throat> so, do you know how many times that God tells us in one way or the other, to fear not in the Bible. Amen. Who said that? Absolutely. What does that tell me? That tells me there's 365 times God says fear not. There's 365 days in a year. That ain't a coincidence. That's every day. Fear not. I've never lost a finger. I've never lost a toe. I've never had anybody try to hit me. And I have been in some pretty shady areas. I was in a, I'll tell you this story. I was in a <clears throat> place in Jacksonville, Florida. And they sent me out with three people that had come out of prison within the last five months. Well, that's nothing strange for me. I worked in the prison system for 30 years up here. Didn't bother me at all. But these guys had just got out. But they were born-again Christians. So they sent me and these three ex-inmates into the projects in Jacksonville, Florida. Now, I'm, I'm just an old country boy from Yancey County. And I'm, I'm good with that because I, I can kind of take care of myself. But this place was shady. But we walked in, and the Lord led me to an apartment. Truth, if I ever told it. Walked in, knocked on the door, and you, you've seen this movie with, with Medea, the, the, the <laughs> mad black woman. This was the maddest woman I've ever seen in my life. She was so mad, she could have bit a ten penny nail in two. And I knocked on the door. And she looks at me and she says, I don't know what you're selling, but I don't want none of it. And I said, can I, can I ask you a couple of questions? I asked her diagnostic questions. And she says, you mean to tell me that you think that there's some old white guy sitting up on a throne somewhere watching over everything that goes on here, and he's dictating what happens? with long white hair and his long white beard. And I said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> and she says, I ain't believing that. She said, I've went to church my whole life. She said, I claim to be a Christian. And she said, I know they ain't nothing to it. I said, will you give me five minutes of your time? And she said, I'll give you five minutes. I left there an hour later. I went through the gospel. She changed her whole countenance. She was not hateful. She was not mean. She did not pray to receive Christ. But I do believe this. I believe what God says, that my word will not return void. And even though I don't see everybody that I talk to except Christ, I know this. 
that there's not a lie in that book. And he says, my word will not return void. And I am a firm believer that everybody I've talked to since I've been doing this will at some point in time before they die and stand before God will accept Jesus Christ. That's a truth that I believe. So does this sound like something you guys would like to do? All right. Well, it's September 10th. It's going to start at 8.30? Yep, yeah, 8.30 or 9. Be, be here, be wherever you're going to have it. You're going to have it in here? Okay. Be here about 8.30, and we'll kick off about 9 o'clock. And uh, when you leave here, you're going to learn how to walk up to somebody you've never seen before, and you're going to ask them those questions. And you're going to be able to tell them everything they need to know about accepting Jesus Christ. This will thrill your hearts, I'm telling you. And when you come back off of OJT, when you go out, when, when, we go, when we start this thing, you will go out with a trainer. There will be four trainers here. And you will go out with a trainer, and we will go maybe to the Walmart parking lot, maybe to the Ingalls parking lot, maybe to the square. And we will talk to people. You guys won't have to say a word. The only thing you got to do is go with us, listen to what we have to say, and then we will come back and we will do another session. And by the time you leave here, you will feel comfortable talking to somebody, but there's a catch. Now, there is a seven-week program. It's an hour and a half a week. If you can invest an hour and a half a week for seven weeks into somebody's eternity, is it worth that to you to really learn how to do this? I've wanted, I've wanted to see this start in Yancey County so bad, I, I have not been able to stand it. I couldn't contain myself when Mr. Espy called me because I don't know of a church in the county that does that. Not a one. Brookstone, we've got 300 trainers that can train anybody how to share the gospel. A lot of faces in here that I know, that I know what's in your heart. I know what you desire to do. I know that sitting on a, on a church pew on Sunday morning and not thinking about anything is not what you want to do. You want to see people come to Christ. I know Jeff Burns. I know Joy and Fritz. I know a lot of people. I know Dwight, Eric, many people in here. That's what the Lord's called you to do. That's the reason I'm here today uh, it is because I want to share this with every man, woman, and child that I come in contact with. They will not keep me quiet. That's all I got. Well, the Bible says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. How many brave people have we got? Oh, bless your heart. How many brave people will be here Saturday the 10th? All right. We'll be looking for you. <laughs> but, you know, uh, isn't, isn't it amazing how the devil can make you scared to death to sue something that Jesus commanded you to do? And uh, there's an old saying, in fact, I think you used it this morning, that says he's never called you to something that he won't see you through something, you know. And we're called to do this. And folks, listen, we are at the end time. We are there. And the Lord's returning very soon. And there's a whole lot of people that will not be ready to meet Jesus.
And we're, if you're a born-again child of God, you're called to be that watchman. And I don't want people's blood on my hand. And think about what an opportunity you have if nobody in the county is doing this and God moves on your heart to be a part of it. Think what a harvest field there is. So please pray and say, Lord, are you calling me to do this? And don't do it like sometimes I do and say, Lord, I know you're not calling me to do this. <laughs> but you know what? He will give you the backbone to do it. It's kind of like he did with Gideon. You know, the angel appeared to him and said, hey, hello there, you mighty man of valor. And he said, who are you talking to? <clears throat> you ain't talking to me. I'm, I'm the least in the family. My family's the least in Israel. And besides all that, we've got all these enemies, and I'm out here hiding, trying to get a little wheat for the family. And the angel said, listen, God's with you. And the same thing's true for us today. If you're a child of God, God's with you. And if God be for you, who can be against you? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for Charles coming and sharing this morning. Thank you for Bruce starting the ball rolling. And, Lord, I don't believe any of that would have happened if you didn't want us involved in winning souls and in evangelism explosion. So, Father, I'm, I'm thanking you for bringing this to us. I'm thanking you for those whose hearts you're going to deal with and cause them to say, yes, here am I, just like the prophet did. Here am I, Lord, send me. So, Lord, we, we believe this is of you, and we believe that you're going to use it in a mighty way to transform lives. And uh, so the day will come when we stand before the judgment seat of Christ, and we have something that we can be rewarded for, and we have a crown that we can lay at his feet. So, Father, we thank you for him. We bless him. We bless the church that he's a part of and this, this entire uh, organization, this entire effort of evangelism explosion. And, Father, we thank you and praise you. So we give you praise and honor and glory today. We thank you for this time together. And, Lord, I ask you to just bless each person that's here today and do a work in all of us, Lord. Prepare us to do what you've called us to do in these last days. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, stand.